from 2015. Author Suzanne Faulkner was doing research on the origins of St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney when she came across the curious case of Eugenia Falleni, a cross-dressing killer in the 1920s. Only the story Dr. Faulkner tells in Eugenia, a man, is far deeper than those words cross-dressing killer suggests. Eugenia's life intersected with another killer, Dorothy Mort, who did not need to cross-dress to kill the man she loved but feared she was losing. The dead man, Claude Tozer, an honoured soldier and GP who had treated her. Tozer was also an opening bat who might have played for Australia in the summer. World W.W. Armstrong won the Ashes 5-0. Tozer was not Mort's husband. Eugenia got lessons in reading and writing from Mrs. Mort in jail. It is worth checking out the books. Cross-dressers in history are known. The Bible has some soldiers cross-dressing in Joshua while scouting a city they hoped to invade. During the Roman persecutions of Christians, a Eugenia dressed as a man but was discovered and sainted. James Barry dressed as a man and became a surgeon in the 19th century. James performed the first known C-section where both mother and child survived. It was circa 1816 in South Africa and did not involve anesthesia. Later, James worked in the Crimea where Florence Nightingale met and despised her. James's gender was only discovered after her death. Women dressing as men makes sense because the possibility of mobility and power. Men dressing as women makes sense when they're trying to hide. But it is an overreach to say cross-dressing just makes sense. There is no evidence that Turnbull cross-dresses, but he isn't supporting freedom of speech. For some, at the moment, the sex party has more credibility.